New Zealand Dairy Farmer is proudly brought to you by Hanson Products, providing Kiwi farmers with water system solutions for over 50 years. Welcome to New Zealand Dairy Farmer. We're in Taranaki for our final show of the year. We'll be spending some time with Blue Reed, board member of Fonterra and chair of Cooperative Business New Zealand on his coastal Taranaki farm. And then we'll head north to Fonterra HQ to discuss governance with the former chairman of the Fonterra board, Sir Henry van der Hayden. But first, it's Blue Reed. How long have you been here on the property uh, in coastal Taranaki at Uranui? We, uh, we bought this farm 25 years ago, so we bought it as a pretty run-down sort of a property and we've developed it since then. Where had you been before then, Blue? We were share milking uh, about 22 kilometres away in a little place called Tikarangi, but not right in Tikarangi itself. We were way up in the hills, towards the McGee oil fields actually. And uh, had you had previous share milking jobs uh, before that one? Yeah, we had two share milking positions. Uh, started, did 15 months of wages for my wife Shirley's father, and then we went 50-50 share milking in Stratford with 146 cows, and then we went to 320 and then we for five years, and then we bought this place. And did you need to uh, make any improvements to the milking shed? Oh, the, the cow shed was a bit of a dag actually, you know, like the, uh, the pit was about halfway up my, um, halfway up towards my knees and you can imagine I'm over six foot, it was pretty difficult to milk and so first job was to deepen that pit and then build a new cow shed sort of four or five years later. And the ambition you know, when we came here was always to build that new cow shed, do it out of uh, income, everything was to be done out of income and uh, pay for the farm within the, the 15 years that we had the loan for. And we did it in 14. And do you have an in-shed feeding system or feed pad, standoff pad, no, anything of that sort? No, nothing fancy like that. We're just For me it's simplicity and profit, productivity, profit. You know, it's, that's my driving force. And because we, you know, both Shirley and I are involved pretty much off farm pretty often, you know, we just want to make it simple. And as I say, if you bring people in, you don't want complicated systems in my view. How did you get involved in uh, off-farm activities that uh, you talked about before? What was the, the driving motivation there? Um, it's a funny story actually. I was on a bus to, for a field trip and we stopped, this is many, many years ago when I was share milking, and we stopped at what used to be the old share milkers uh, watering hole if you like. You know, Once a month they'd meet at the Tariki Hotel in Tariki and the bus stopped there and I walked in and um, <laughs> there was a couple of issues that I've you know, been reading about and thinking about and just got a little excited. and. I got, um, I got grabbed and uh, that, it sort of went from there, you know, a bit of Federated Farmers, uh, share, share milking issues um, and got tied up with the Share Milk of the Year competition way, way back in the early days uh, and it just seemed to just keep evolving from there, um, dairy company amalgamations, all that sort of thing. And what about representation? Uh, other farmers uh, must have called on you at different stages to represent their views on uh, a wide range of issues? Yeah, that's, that's happened. I mean, when Fonterra first started in my backgrounds and the shareholders council, my neighbours um, came and saw me and said, you need to be on the shareholders council. I said no twice. On the third, third visit I said, and this is an old story, but on the third visit I said, okay, but you'll, you know, if I'm away, you'll, you guys will have to help Shirley because we don't have the wherewithal to employ people at that stage. And look, without a word of a lie, the support from the neighbours around here has been unbelievable. You know, if we've ever had a problem, um, Shirley can ring them and you know, one, one neighbour in particular just drops stuff and comes, comes over. Mm. He's getting pretty close to 80 now, so he's not quite so quick. <laughs> but. <laughs> So that was your reason for turning down that opportunity twice or were there other family reasons um, there? Like we, I curtailed everything, all the involvement for, um, like I was, I was chairman I think of uh, Dairy Section Taranaki and I decided to curtail that because the kids were more important or the family was more important to me than um, being involved elsewhere. Um, but you know, when, yeah, when issues come up, you know, you want to have a, you know, you want to be part of it sort of thing because you just, you know, you, you just can't allow other people to control your destiny, if you like, so. So that was a big move, to decide that uh, you wanted to be a part of the council and come right through to being chair for several years. Yeah, although, you know, nobody ever does it on their own sort of thing, and I think it comes down to, you know, you know the reason I went through was because other people were sort of you know, pushing me to do it. Um, I'm, you know, I've, I often say I don't have an ego, which is obviously not true because I've got a massive one, but I don't let my ego override what I believe to be my capabilities sort of thing, you know, like um, it's great that other people think I can do the job and you know, what I generally find is that people help you do the job and I think that's a really, really neat thing. How difficult was it uh, on the council with all those different opinions of the different councillors 
from different areas of the country, mm. and perhaps standing up for their farmers uh, on subjects which uh, other farmers from different areas just yeah. weren't that concerned about. Yeah, no, sometimes it got difficult, but I always, you know, my modus operandi is to try and treat people with respect. If they treat you with respect, you, you return that and, and allow them if they um, are wrong. <laughs> that sometimes happens and sometimes I'm wrong, but you always treat people with dignity. I um, mean, at the end of the day, you know, sometimes you have to say, well, you know, you're wrong, um, therefore the argument has to stop here, and sometimes that got a little rough, but, you know, that's, um, you know, treat people with respect, make sure they're heard, uh, and, but make sure that they also understand that the de democratic process is, is what must hold sway. And the council now is quite a different beast from uh, the one that started off when Fonterra was formed back in 2001. Yeah, there was, um, there was a fair bit of finding our way uh, in the first instance, and I think even now, there's got to be a, a bit of a reset, you know, with bringing in trading amongst farmers. The, the role of performance monitoring per se has changed to what it was. And you know, my, my own personal opinion is I'd really like to see the, uh, the model changed a little bit so that we get a greater awareness that council's role is actually to look after ownership issues. And if, they, you know, if that's called representation, then fine. Um, but let's understand what that is, you know, like the, the, the way we own and exercise our ownership of, of Fonterra is what council's role should be in my view. What about running for uh, Fonterra as a director? Did it take your uh, neighbours uh, three goes to persuade you to do that? <laughs> it wasn't the neighbours this time but it was other people. Um, I was asked to stand the year, year before and I said I just emphatically said no um, you know, because I was pretty tired after running, you know, being um, chairing the council for three years and getting through that uh, vote on tap. I was, you know, I mean, I was, I was completely whack quite frankly. Um, and then, you know, some other people, people I respect, quite frankly, that came to me and, you know, people I never thought would say, you know, blue step up or else. So, and my ego was big enough to say, yeah, give it a go. So the time was right? It, it was sort of right, but, you know, again, the wild enthusiasm, um, yeah, I didn't go seeking it to any degree. Uh, one of the things, I sometimes get accused of being a political animal, um, so, you know, for me it was really important that I didn't go out and make a big political game of trying to get on the board of directors and so I didn't actually do um, very much canvassing at all. In fact I could count the number of phone calls I made basically on one hand and that may sound a little arrogant but there was a team of people I think that were working on my behalf, not, not at my behest but at my behalf and I think the reputation and record that I had stood me in good stead. Well clearly it did. Um, and you know I, I really feel strongly about you know, the political process running properly but I, I despise politicising um, the, the process of electing directors. Some of it's necessary but some of it is just absolute rubbish. After the break we leave the Taranaki coastline and head to Fonterra HQ to discuss governance roles with Sir Henry van der Hayden. See you after the break. <laughs>